Am I supposed to always stand here so that you do? Like, like, I'm always caught in camera. Yeah. Hey. Alright guys, uh, so the second speaker for the day is uh, Kim Sia. Thank so you. take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Um, before I officially start, I just want to go through uh, three rules for my presentation. You can see from the screen. Uh, I'll give a 10 minute talk. 8 minutes for the talk itself, 2 minutes for Q&A, I'll time myself. Uh, so if 8 minutes is up and I haven't finished, we'll just stop right there and I'll take questions. You can stop me at any time to ask me any questions. So you don't have to save your questions for the last 2 minutes. Uh, if, you, if you're shy, you can write a piece of paper or something. I don't know. Or you can ask uh, Michael, to, Michael Cheng to forward me your questions. Uh, I prefer that you learn one new thing at the end of today rather than me having to finish my talk. So if I don't finish my talk, but you learn something, that's a win for me. Uh, any questions so far? So I kind of cheated because I haven't actually started my timer. This is the pre end. <laughs> that's two minutes already. Right? Cool? Yep. Good. So let me start off with, uh, by saying that uh, I, have some, I have good news and bad news. You guys heard about shit sandwich, right? Mm. Uh, how you give constructive criticism. Shit sandwich is like this because nobody wants to hear criticism. So you say something nice, then you say the criticism, and then you say something nice again. So it's called a shit sandwich. So I have a, I have a bad news sandwich for you guys. The, the, the good news is my shot is 10 minutes long. The bad news is I actually have two talks. But the good news is I'm the last speaker. So that's the bad news sandwich. The, the, talk, um, the two talks, the first talk I'm actually giving is, uh, let me see, this one. So the first one I'll be covering is Kick Fest. Oh, better make sure I turn on. Did I turn it on? Oh yeah, I'm on. Right, I only have three things to talk about Kick Fest 2014. Oh, um, by the way, uh, who has played with Kick PHP? Uh, either two, three, and beyond. One. One also. <laughs> oh, okay. So the rest of you are all Kick PHP haters, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can actually leave, but just don't throw tomatoes at me. <laughs> My skin is a bit thin. Uh, I went to Kickfest uh, 2014, it was on August, so that's why I missed the August PHP meetup here in Singapore. Um, so I'll just quickly run through. Uh, I cheated because uh, the slides I'm going to use is actually used by the people at Kickfest. So I'll just cover that. Uh, the three things I'll cover is Kickfest is getting bigger and better, Kick PHP itself, the community is getting bigger and better, and some new updates the community so uh, where's my slides oops this one right this one view slash show right oh shit go right from the start <laughs> right so right so back in uh Quick Fest 2013 was held in uh, San Francisco, USA. I didn't go to that one. Over 80 attendees uh, from 20 over countries with 11 sponsors. The one I went to was this year in August 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, I think, over four days. Uh, it was held in Madrid, Spain. Over 110 attendees, that includes myself and my one employee. From 22 countries, so I represent Singapore. There were 13 sponsors for this event. Whoa. Okay, the location uh, is a nice hotel. Uh, the speakers, well, over 20 speakers were giving talks on top of the Kick PHP workshops. They had Kick PHP workshop over two days, followed by the conferences. So the conferences were dominated by the speakers who gave anywhere between a five minute to a 15 minute talk. Um, my favorite was the one given by Phil, Phil Sturgeon. Uh, he was really entertaining. He got up to talk about API uh, pain points, and he did it while drunk, and he was still drinking while giving the talk. <laughs> so these are the full list of speakers. The schedule was really damn packed, uh, as you can see. Cover anything between how to scale your MySQL from Dave Stokes, who actually works in MySQL, to uh, to people from Japan like uh, Andosan. Uh, who talks about testing your app with Selenium on Travis CI. I learned something from that one. I was looking forward to talks as well, like uh, how to do payment processing by Mariano Iglesias. And of course, there were other smaller talks uh, given by the Cake PHP core team. And there were lightning talks and uh, core panel Q&A. So all in all, it was a pretty good event and 
I, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I was kind of scared. Before I go, I thought, oh, this could be probably a waste of my money. But I went there, I was really blown away. And uh, the one thing you should take away from this is regardless which framework you support or whichever language you support, it doesn't even have to be PHP. If, you, if there is a conference overseas or even in Singapore and it has many speakers whom you admire over the internet, you should really go because it really increases your learning curve a lot, tremendously. Just by talking to them, you really learn something. Okay? Right, so the community itself getting bigger and better. This is the commit history for KPHP over the past, in fact, from its history since 2006. I know it's a bit small on the screen. Over there on the right hand side is 2014. As you can see, the commit has been increasing tremendously in terms of frequency. Uh, on the day, uh, that was a month ago, they released Kick PHP 2.5. Uh, the developer alpha and beta version of 3 was also released. In fact, the first beta release of 3 was released on the day itself on Kickfest. Statistics wise, these are just numbers just to impress the hell out of you. More than 8 million visitors on their website, 31 million page views, 110 plus releases of KPHP up to date. It's now probably added another dozen more. It's in the top 5 most popular PHP frameworks. When they say things like that, it means it's the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> right, 300 plus contributors to the framework. Uh, it could do 320 plus contributors to the documentation. I think I count myself as uh, one of the contributors to the documentation. Um, most of you guys are better than me, better than me at the technical stuff. So for beginners uh, like myself, to contribute to this open source, the first thing to do is you contribute to the documentation. Make it easier for a beginner because sometimes experts, they actually forgot what it feels like to be a beginner. So this is one way you start. And what one thing I remember hearing from the Kickfest itself is uh, today's contributor to the documentation is tomorrow's open source author. Right, so if, if you feel that the documentation, not necessarily cake, any open source project that you support, you want to uh, make the documentation a little bit better, please do it, okay? It really makes everybody's life better. Uh, 23,000 <coughs> plus commits on the 3.0 branch. 12,000 plus followers on Twitter, not as many as Justin Bieber. 14,000 plus likes on Facebook, 18,000 plus members in Google group. 20,000 plus questions on Stack Overflow, definitely more than topics on Justin Bieber. <laughs> Statistics. <coughs> uh, Kick PHP users and developers come from all these countries. Um, the documentation has been translated into various languages. They actually profile the people who uses the framework. And you can, as you can see, uh, I remember when I first hear this talk given by the community manager James Watts, he mentioned that when they first started, the female, were female component of the developers was actually at 5%. So for it to double in the next, over the past 3-4 years, 11% was very encouraging. But he emphasized that more women should be uh, developing in general, it doesn't even have to be KPHP because the more the diversity it is, the more diversity we see in open source, the better it is for everyone. The concentration of the age group is between 25 and 34. Um, and also 18 to 24. Right, so I've covered two of the three things I wanted to say about KPS and KPHP in general. So the third thing is uh, what's new? They actually launched uh, new cookbooks written by the core team. Oh, time's up. Right, uh, as per my rule, so I'll just stop right here to take any questions. Um, very quickly, I'll just say that they, the core team has written cookbooks. Uh, they have a GitHub issue. They are pushing out this thing called Kick PHP certification. And they actually have a podcast uh, done by one of their core teams as well, interviewing various members of the core team and veterans who have been using the framework for a very long time. So basically, that's it at this point in time. Any questions that I can entertain? I'm sorry if I talk too fast. Am I? It's just fine. It's fine. Questions? Any questions? About KPHP in general? 
I don't work for them. I use KPHP professionally. That means that I actually get paid to write KPHP code. I have yet to dabble as a hobby on KPHP 3, which is actually the reason why I'm doing the second talk. Uh, I want to talk about ORM. And, that, and when you ask me some kind of questions and I cannot answer you, I'll feel so embarrassed that tomorrow I will start having to dabble in KPHP 3. So this is my way of forcing myself to uh, keep up to date in that sense. Uh, since you are here, Michael Chang, I feel that you want to say something. No. <laughs> So you guys have any questions for Kim Sia about K? Yeah, Mike. Sorry, Michael. Okay, so oh, Michael Bush. Yeah. Yes, I. Yeah, as a developer, so I'm quite uh, curious about the uh, yeah, what's the new feature in KPP? Like what? Uh, what is the minimum PHP version is required, and what is the main uh, new feature compared compared from KPP three to uh, sorry, K three to K two? Okay, fantastic, because I saw your talk just now, yeah. so I actually prepared to answer the question. <laughs> so, this is the composer.json uh, Sorry, let me try to find this. Right, so what does it require? The version. Ta da 5.4.16 to be exact. Okay, so the Kick 3 requires Kick 3 from Kick 2 is backward incompatible, so uh, they decided to leap uh, from 5.2, I believe, all the way to 5.4. They skipped the version. Uh, new features. Um, I actually will be covering one very briefly, but my suggestion is the complete list, I think, would be better off uh, finding on Facebook. I actually belong to the Cake PHP uh, official group. I believe there was a question asked about which are which what is your favorite features? Features? Mm, no? Okay. Right. Okay, the most important thing for me is uh, most important features is the ORM, which I'll cover briefly. The ORM has changed tremendously. They actually include a query builder. They take the model in Cake 2. If you are familiar with Cake 2, the model is was a bit monolithic. Now they split it. Now you have table that talks directly to the database through the query builder, and they have an entity model. So your model layer now split into two parts. That is a huge change. They did something with view. They use very confusing terms. Uh, off the top of my head, I cannot recall. I believe it was... Uh yes, this thing called cells. Oops view cells. Um, personally, I find this confusing. So even if you ask me, I don't think it's, uh, I will be the best person to explain <coughs> this concept. If you're familiar with Cake 2, the others don't change so much. But these cells, are the best way I can describe it is like this. You know how your Facebook page uh, on the top right hand corner, you have notification. Wouldn't it be nice if you just have one view just to do that little thing and then just plug it into your main view? The view cells is a little bit like that. Are they okay. kind of like directives in AngularJS? Uh, not really. Sorry, not really. Okay. Yeah. Just it's like a smaller view that you can plug in the main view. I think that's the best way I can describe it. Widgets. Widgets, yes, yeah, oh, widgets is a, is a good analogy. Am I done with my two minutes? Oh, actually, yeah, I didn't turn it on. <laughs> okay, then uh, I will okay. put it as 30 more seconds. So, yeah. any other questions? Any other questions yeah. at this point in time? Kick 3 uh, has a huge uh, breaking change from Kick 2, which is why I'm loath to, I'm very scared to even uh, update my own working applications to Kick 3. But going forward, I will be building 
on cake 3 most likely questions no really you can ask me any questions um, <coughs> anybody plans to play with cake 3 Michael Gui. one mm -hmm. two um, Sulish. <laughs> anybody uh, using KPHP professionally meaning you actually get paid oh, oh okay. one two okay good three um, anything else that I can uh, answer that you have burning questions no wow right. tough crowd <laughs> <laughs> right so um, Yeah. Um, right. Next, uh, I'll talk about the ORM. I think eight minutes just won't do justice to it because there's been a lot of change. But I did realize something, so I'll start right now. If there's one thing you need to take away from the Kick Three ORM, I think it's this web page. No, not this one. <laughs> okay. This is uh, for those who are familiar with Symphony. This is the doctrine. Doctrine is uh, the ORM that Symfony uses to talk to the database to do your query and your inserts, right? This is the syntax. You use the Doctrine Query Builder, okay? This is the new KPHP 3 Query Builder. This one. It is similar. So basically, to summarize ahead of time uh, about my brief talk, which is already very brief to begin with, is that KIC PHP 3 for their ORM, what they do is they follow what everybody else is doing. They finally caught up, as in they decide to have a query builder, they have more layers, <coughs> and they make it more expressive for you to do your queries. And that means whatever you learn in KIC 2 is very different, dramatically different. Okay, I cannot cover everything, so I'll cover the most important points. The most important points would be that um, you now have a query object. Your kick 2 model now split into 2, you have a table and an entity. It now works better with subqueries because of this situation. And that means when you do your custom finder queries, uh, please take note, you must return a query object. You're not returning a result. You're not returning an array or you're returning a single value. Okay, that is what happens in CAC 2. So, again, I cheated by using uh, somebody's slide from CakeFest itself. <laughs> so, I'll talk to you about the short story of why they decide to revamp this finally. Okay. This is how they did it back in Cake 2. There was much rejoice and then much sadness because it became something quite unwieldy to use. I know this uh, very well because I use it in my professional career. The emphasis is that uh, the ORM, the R should be there. So um, this, was, this was done, this presentation was done by Lorenzo. Lorenzo is one of the core, core team members. And one day in his day job, uh, his boss asked him to, hey, can we, you know, find out the last workshop attendees emails and their attendees emails were all, attendees data was all stored in MongoDB. And it took him longer to write it. And he's a very smart guy. So he, what he was trying to illustrate with this real life example is that relational databases are not going to go away, uh, even with the rise of no SQL storage engines. SQL is highly de uh, declarative, declarative. Sorry, I'm a technical guy, I'm not an English major. Even non programmers can get good at it. This is true. I know friends who do not know a single bit of IOTA or programming. They work in uh, finance, finance companies. Lester probably has an example as well. Yeah. You teach them very basic SQL, they can just get going immediately. Immediately. Uh, it allows you to query your data in any angle. So the point is they decide to uh, refactor the ORM such, such that it gives you that power to be very expressive and make use of uh, SQL's advantage. 
So this means that they're not gonna, the ORM will not connect to anything that is not a relational database. However, that doesn't mean that the framework cannot use NoSQL storage. Okay, they will focus on getting the most of the relational features, meaning to say your aggregate clauses like sum, average, <coughs> count, you can use your group by, like code. There will be no incomplete abstractions, it should work for MySQL, it should work for Postgres and so on. All your most popular RDBMS. And you need not spend hours scratching your head trying to wrap your head around uh, uh, another API. Okay, so they will make it very clean. So the first layer, you can still use the connection directly without the ORM. And second, code block is whereby you use the table registry to, which is the ORM to get the users you want. They also added extensible column type system. So if you really want to map enum to enum type, you can also do so. If you know you want to have multiple rows for your user table. Okay, this is something that I really want to highlight. Okay, lazy loading or for almost anything. So back in take two, if you do something at find all, you expect to get back your result set, right? Uh, no, it doesn't do that now in take three. It still is a query object. The only time the query is actually executed is when you have certain key functions, for example, all. So this will execute. This will execute the query. Even when you have that, it hasn't executed the query. So what this means is it allows chaining. It allows uh, building with subqueries. Right, so this is the part whereby it tells you that everything can be an expression queries can be composed and it makes it a lot more fun to work with. So when I was in the kickfest and I heard this, I thought, wow, this is, I'm really looking forward for to this, but too bad it came out only now, but it should have came out like two, three years ago. So there is an example. Um, I will give you the link on the Facebook page itself. So this is a country table. So it's a, just imagine that there are data table called countries. It belongs to capitals. Uh, it has many cities, it has many languages. So the database schema looks something like this. Okay, so you have languages, countries, and cities. So you're asking me where is capital? Simple, because a capital is actually a, a city as well. Okay, so it points, uh, the capital ID points to one of the cities in the cities table. So given this, Oh, cute my screen. On the, on the next full screen. Next full screen. Control left or control right? Control left. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. Cool. So when you want to do, when you have a query, like say you want to find the countries with the biggest monarchy. So the government form should be monarchy and you want to sort by uh, population. So SQL is very easy. I'll select star from countries where government form equals to monarchy order by population DESC. You see, SQL is so easy. But it's very hard to write this in uh, the old kick 2 code. Now it's very easy because of the query builder. This is almost like SQL itself where, but of course, some of you who are already using Symfony or Laravel, you're ha ha ha, this is nothing, <laughs> la, come on. Okay, yes, yes, I know. <laughs> and so you get this. Wow, I made this <coughs> Oh, time's up. So, there's actually more examples, but basically, the idea is that the ORM is the biggest change uh, on top of many other changes. I know I only mentioned two, one is this, one is view cells. There are a couple more that slipped my mind. This is something that really cannot be covered in 10 minutes or even 20 minutes. But the biggest thing you should know getting out of this is that with this, uh, your code should be far more maintainable. Far more maintainable. Because in real life, what happens is uh, using kick 2 I ended up having to write raw SQL statement and then I get kick 2 to call the raw SQL query and it's just terrible. And it makes me wonder why I bother with that ORM in the first place, right? So this makes it far more easier to run your queries. 
Right, so at this point, any questions? Um, any? <coughs> Lester, you happy with the length of the presentation? Yes. People love having a short presentation, I know. Okay, possible questions you might ask me while I was sitting there thinking. Uh, do I recommend mm. moving into Cake 3 right now? Okay, as a hobby, yes. Hobby project, yes. As a paid application or some job you want to do for your client, no. Uh, you can charge renewal fee. I'm sorry? You can charge three months later, you can charge. Three months later, you can charge. Uh, you should take money up front. Yeah, after that, after that. After maintenance, maintenance. Maintenance, uh. Uh, oh. evil, evil. <laughs> no, <not kidding. laughs> Actually, this is this is something you can pull off, I guess, if you have a very good relationship and uh, with with your client, I guess, and you expect it to be a long term project. Meaning, you need to add more features as time goes by. So you could do that. Um, what other questions uh, I could imagine? Possibly ask me. I guess that was that would be the most important question. If you are a KPHP developer, um, well, I have some question to ask some of you. So, um, what frameworks or do you guys mostly use? Symphony. You use everything, Michael. We. <laughs> what do you not use? Maybe I should ask. Symphony Laravel. Symphony Laravel and Cake. Symphony. So just now I said who uses Cake, you also raised your hand. Previously I used Cake. Previously, Cake 2? What? Yes, Cake 2. Yeah. Because the ORM sucks, that's why you stopped using it. It moved to Laravel. Because, <laughs> because Laravel is the new hotness. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Um, uh, code Igniter. Code Igniter. Yeah. Oh, uh, code Igniter. Fuel. You also use. Yes. Uh, fuel PHP. Laravel. Yee? Yi Yi framework. Yi. You also use. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, how, how many of you guys are not programmers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, actually that's a good question. <laughs> uh, students. Uh, how many students do we have here? I mean, uh, a lot of you don't raise your hands. Hey, then why are you doing here for those who haven't raised any hands? This is uh, Ruby. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're in the wrong place, lah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. How many of you um, make money? Either you get paid as an employee or you are you are a self employed or you are an employer from developing PHP in general? Raise your hand. So that's the majority of the room, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, only a few raised hands for Symphony, a few raised hands for Yi, I think zero. So I assume. So I rest, uh, I rest of you, I assume it's some custom framework that's built in-house. Oh, I know already one we never mentioned. WordPress. WordPress? <laughs> <laughs> WordPress. Okay. But Drupal? still... Drupal? Drupal? Any Drupal? So most of you... Okay, okay, okay most of you... Most of people in this room are PHP programmers, that's one. Most of the PHP programmers don't use any framework. Am I correct to say that? <laughs> or you guys are so shy. Okay. Really, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. okay. Um. <laughs> oh, I know Zen framework. Uh. <laughs> I okay. think like okay. so. Those who have not raised a hand, what do you guys use? <laughs> Laravel. Oh yeah, Laravel. Laravel. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, the half is Laravel. Then the people who are not PHP programmers. <laughs> uh, may I know your yeah, reason know. for coming to this? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm curious, I'm curious, I'm curious, I'm curious. No, it's not an attack. It's like, I'm really curious, I'm really curious. Yeah, I'm just, uh, some of my colleagues do some like program, and okay. uh, part of our, our company do some like uh, platform okay. So I would like to know Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, right. So just now, all the jargon I've thrown out, right? Uh, how does that help you? Does it confuse you? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. It is. Uh, oh. That's fine. Maybe in the future, I will learn more and uh, realize. Oh, okay. I'm, I hope it doesn't scare you from coming to future meetups. <laughs> yeah, sure. Please. 